All right, what's going on, guys? So, we're gonna try and start the car today. It's got a few things to uh, knock off the list first, like, you know, let me actually just grab my list. All right, so, I'm gonna have to tighten the wastegate, check for any fuel leaks by priming the uh, fuel pump with my power probe. Um, still gotta do those coil pack connectors. Um, power steering reservoir, check for oil leaks, um, then upload the base map and start the car. So let's get going. That whole time, but it wasn't. Um, I got my fuel pressure regulator all hooked up. So this is what I did. I got this fitting right here actually from um, Perfect Tuning. And then I was gonna just originally use an AN fitting like a 90 on here. That does not work because, as you can see, and if you watch my previous video, you remember me talking about this, but this just clears. So then it goes 45 AN6 uh, fitting down. It then comes around underneath the intake manifold and then to my fuel pressure regulator. Then for my fuel pressure regulator, it goes down back underneath the car and then in here to the Aristo fuel hanger. So as you can see, Aristo fuel hanger, that's fuel feed. This is my fuel return, okay? And uh, yeah, so that's that. And uh, I already primed it and tested for leaks and how I did that, because I created this fuse box myself. This 15 amp fuse is, um, for the fuel pump so this side closest to the relay that's the feed for the fuel pump from the relay so I just put my power probe on that pin down there and it feeds through the fuse safely over to the fuel pump and it holds 40 psi no leakage no nothing so that's a good thing so yeah so I created a custom power steering pump, I guess you could say, out of the GE power steering pump reservoir. So at the bottom, it has like some push fitting. I cut it off and then tapped it for an AN10 fitting, used an AN1090, then over to some AN10 line, and then straight into the power steering uh, pump. Then over here on this side, that goes down to the actual rack itself. So that and that are done the other thing i did um yesterday which i forgot to mention was this pipe right here this is my intake air temperature sensor and it came with a bung but what i actually did instead was i just drilled a hole i didn't even have a tap for this size and i but i drilled the right to the perfect size i used some thread uh cement and i threaded it in there and it is sturdy as hell so yeah, that's how I did my intake air temperature sensor. I also had to shorten up my downpipe just a slight bit by about, I'll show you actually exactly how much. <clears throat> now that's downpipe I bought on eBay because when it comes down to piping and stuff, pretty much it's all the same as long as it's 16 gauge and it's actually stainless. But uh, as you can see, see the angle? Okay, so I had to cut that angle because I wanted to go too far over here to this corner. So as you can see, it's still a little tight back there, but I'm gonna do a heat shield back there and some other jazz. And then this is my wide band there. So that's that. So I'm just gonna bang out a few more things.
Let's go back, 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 back.
Alright guys, what's going on? It's actually the next day. Um, so the car will not be starting yesterday or today due to the fact that I'm still waiting to hear back from my tuner and I was hoping that he was going to get back to me uh, yesterday. Actually, I was hoping he was going to get back to me the day before, which he did not. Um, I also ran into a little bit of issues with my cam signal. Okay, and it was all due to needing a resistor, which it does not say anywhere in the instructions. Which is okay, it is what it is, but... And I wasn't able to call him because it was a weekend and obviously... Yeah, so long story short, I spent about 10 hours on trying to figure out why I had no cam signal. Or crank signal. Figured it out, needs a resistor, 4107... Or actually, I'll put the link in the description. But I'm 100% on that. Um... Now, I got the coil pack connectors done. I'll show you guys that. So as you can see, coil packer or coil pack connectors are all done. Put back on. Now, as I showed you before, the IAT and all that other jazz. Now, I pop my rad in. And I'm running Mishimoto fans, so as you can see, there's no fans there. But, oh, let me get a light. Down in here, see how it's a push style? So, I just gotta wire those up. Everything in the fuse box is working. Um, I also need to mount this catch can on the wall here and run these lines. So, yeah. A couple more things to do. I also need to get an upper rad hose because I don't have one of those and get a throttle cable because I don't have one of those. But that's regardless because that's not going to stop me from being able to start the car. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping that he honestly gets back to me soon enough. This is pretty much checking over, or pretty much essentially making a base map. Um, yeah, is what it is. Guess what you get for going standalone. If I had the stock ECU in here, it'd be running right now. But it ain't. Some way in that goddamn base map. Why? Ah, that's what it is. Can't be upset. So, I'm hoping that the next video is gonna be the start. Um, if you guys have any questions on anything about this stuff at all whatsoever, um, just let me know, honestly. Because to get this motor in here, there was no modification to anything except for the fact that I need an upper rad hose and a throttle cable. All the fuel lines fit, power steering lines fit, I, everything works. I get to literally nice little swap. So, yeah. What I'm hoping is that in the next video, I'm gonna do my intercooler and my intercooler piping and show you guys how to custom make some piping and whatnot. And hopefully, I'm gonna have my base map. So, let's hope for it. Everyone, everyone hope for it. All right, guys, take it easy. Have a great day.